Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Hey, Wednesday. What's up, everybody? It's a Wednesday morning edition of the Daily Market Commentary, where we had a really interesting day yesterday in the markets. We're down about 10 points this morning in the S&P as we are selling off just a bit. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor, click the subscribe button down below, hit the notification bell so you get the updates. If you are not new to the channel, do me a favor. It takes no effort at all to push that little thumbs up that says like. Uh, I would greatly appreciate it. Let's the algorithms know that people are indeed watching. So uh, just do it. Do it already. Come on. What's taking you so long? Push the button. Push the one that says like. All right, appreciate you. All right, let's go ahead and get going. Uh, the S and P this morning we're down eleven points, and we are we are coming off of a bit of a uh, a bit of a, a supply area where the markets uh, hit this high and have now kind of rolled over, especially during the globex session. We've rolled over pretty hard in the globex session. Now yesterday. We rallied off of this 15-minute level, got a really nice move off of that 15-minute level, but we used that completely up. So it used up that whole area. Uh, and so now when I look at the four-hour, we are definitely in a sideways kind of market, uh, definitely in a sideways market condition. Still overall a bit more bullish than we are bearish. Um, you know, what's funny is I'm, I'm reading a lot of different a lot of different uh, pundits, financial pundits that are that are talking about all the reasons why this bull market is over. Um, the bull market is not over until it's <laughs> until the trend tells us it's over. Um, and our daily chart has not told us that yet, right? Um, you know we've we've had some interesting pullbacks during this bull bull rally. Um, you know, for example, this pullback here when when we went from about twenty nine sixty to twenty seven twenty seven, I mean that's a two hundred and forty point pullback. That's about eight uh, percent. Pretty deep, pretty steep pullback uh, overall for the overall broad markets, uh, and definitely slowing of momentum, but still bullish, right? Not change that overall uh, that overall bias, right? There's there's but there is going to be. Some reason to consider. Okay, maybe I might want to look for some shorts this morning. Um, and the first place I'm going to go to is the 15 minute chart. And looking at the 15 minute chart, you know this breakdown area here occurred right at uh, the European market open. And for those of you that that watch the show regularly, watch our channel regularly, I talk a lot about levels formed at the European market open. Now your stop would have to go above the pivot, but this is a potential level, knowing that it's lower probability. Remember, everything I say, in right, frankly, in the S&P, the NASDAQ, the crude oil, and gold, all of our levels, I'm trying to temper expectations because of the fact that we're in sideways price markets. In the sideways price market, you always have lower expectations. Now, interestingly enough, we've come back to a little bit of a demand area, but we based in front of the level. So those of you that use... That they use the rules. We talk about how is basing in front of the level. Uh, how does basing in front of a level affect a level? It's it's like the kiss of death. And so we came into it and then moved away. And now we're coming back into it again. So this is a level we didn't have this level identified, uh, but the basing before the level kind of destroys it. And you'll see that in a couple of other opportunities today, uh, where basing before the level is is definitely a you know one of the things that makes it a challenge. Yesterday the uh, in the in the NQ. We are uh, sitting, frankly, right now at about the same level we were yesterday. I had this little level identified for potential reversal, um, and it was basically off of the backs of this area, knowing that, once again, what I said was it's, it's lower probability, right? There wasn't a whole lot of probability in that area, um, and, and so you're, you're you know, you're, you're kind of forcing the level a little bit, and I, th and I think it's good for people to, to, to see when that's happening, but... So that level certainly didn't hold true, and now I'd, I'd be looking a bit higher, and that same 2 a.m. area is right about here in the NASDAQ. So we got that same 2 a.m. reversal area just about here in the NASDAQ. Not, not totally confident in the short there, um, but I think it's better than, the, uh, than what we're seeing in the, um, uh, excuse me, the, than the S&P, right? So the S&P is down 0.36 this morning, the NASDAQ is down 0.68, a little bit stronger uh, downward move this morning. Huge, uh, big red candle yesterday. 
uh, with, at the end of the market day on a 15 minute uh, 15 minute time period on a big big sell off, uh, and then that was a speed candle, so that got retraced about into the uh, looks like into about the 618 market before then falling off. So now what I'm looking at on the on the hourly chart is I do have still sideways price action. So I think you're kind of forcing it if you're looking for too many levels inside of here. Same thing with crude oil. Crude oil on a four-hour chart, you have a little bit of sideways price action. We did have a bump higher um, overall, but we still have some levels of supply to contend with, but they're not for a little while above us. Um, no real clean levels for me to lean on right away. Um, we, we hit this little level here and reversed off of it, but now we're just kind of chopping around sideways inside of it. Yesterday, I was looking at this area here for a potential reversal, and we rallied right up into it, um, but didn't get really any follow through. So now I think it's best just to hold off. Uh, hold off on crude oil. There's really nothing to add. Same thing in gold. You're going to see that gold, we have a very similar picture as far as the four hour giving us um, weakening upward momentum. Now, we had a, a triangle pattern that I kind of felt like we had broken out of in gold with some, some force, um, but it didn't, uh, it didn't, didn't take, if you will, um, on the breakout. And we are Still, you know, still getting some higher lows on the four hour chart, but it just didn't take on the breakout. And then yesterday we had a very small little level in here um, where I thought, OK, we may get a bit of a reversal, uh, but your stop has to go up in this region. So you got a real quick touch up into here and then and then a bit of, of a sell off. And now and now it looks like we've put in a little bit of a, a, a you know, a double uh, a, a double bottom pattern here. Um, where I've got uh, nice rounded bottoms in this piece. This could serve to, to thrust price higher up into this region. If you get a little bit of, a, of an opportunity, you could get a reversal somewhere down into here. I would be interested to know, you know what's, what, what news catalyst is going to drive this market. When we see, just going back to all four of these markets, when I see all four of these markets in such a you know, loss of momentum, sideways kind of price action, that tells me that the markets are waiting on a news announcement. That tells me that the markets are saying, hey, something's going to happen because we don't have a defined, a definitive direction on either of these positions. And without some sort of definitive trend direction, you're always going to have lower probability. All right, let's take a look next at our bond markets. So taking a look this morning at our bond markets, we have the same kind of picture, a little bit of sideways price action. So we had talked about the fact that this area here could turn into a potential breakout zone um, and even a reversal point. And so if you notice, we came into that level yesterday and rallied up nicely off of that zone. Now, you may have taken the long off of this area. And if you did, great. If not, I think it, out, it now actually sets up better for a potential breakdown if price does base in front of this level. So keep an eye on this zone a little bit later. Uh, in the Aussie, so unfortunately in the Aussie, we, got a, we had a confirmation entry set up here. Um, but notice we had our confirmation entry, and then we based right after that level. Now, by basing in front of that level, what does that mean? Well, that means that it was no longer valid the second time through. And that's one of the reasons, you know, yesterday we, we put that in our trade feed update is that the 6A confirmation level came very close to entry, missed by a tick, and is now basing just above the level. And basing above the level means this is no longer a valid zone. So we have to remove that zone. However, we did have um, this now becomes an origin of a move down, and there could be an opportunity on the reversal back into this level. So unfortunately, missed out on the little bit of a thrust higher, um, but that's okay because what that, did, what that did is keep us out of a bad trade. So uh, now the euro, the euro, we have another confirmation style entry. Um, but as you notice, we came into this euro level, um, and then we really you know, started to base a little bit just above the zone. So remembering what basing above the zone means, um, it definitely weakens that level, removes that from a probability of going forward. 
Um, so now I need to look a bit higher as to, okay, where's my breakdown point? So we already actually had the breakdown from earlier this week. Some of you had mentioned in the comments that you had taken that short, which is awesome. You still may be in that position um, as this is what the euro has done. Really strong sell-off after that four-hour breakdown. So um, that was really so far the best trade we've had this week is the breakdown in the euro um, and it's really running along with a lot of strength. So the next area, I think, would be a retest back up to one of these levels. This long lower wick makes that uh, makes the next breakdown a little bit more challenging. So I think it might make sense to look for a bit of a rally up. Um, and I think that opportunity comes into play right about here. I think right about here may be your, your, your best bet for a rally higher. You may even have a stop somewhere up above here. Um, but that's the probably the ne next best bet for a rally higher. Canadian dollar, we got a little touch off that tweezer bottom, uh, and then it's just kind of stalled. So if you took that, if you took that trade, uh, that level's still not dead. You can use it again uh, using a confirmation entry though, because we gave it a touch and go already once. Um, however, I would at least, at the very least, take some money off the table at this point, since it's not really going anywhere. Kind of chopping along sideways, just like pretty much everything else. Uh, Great British Pound, Japanese Yen. The pound is kind of continuing that trend of downward price action. Uh, we came into our pound level and had a really nice move away from that uh, from that level uh, last week, and it's kind of just maintained that move down. We did get a rally here as the as the euro showed weakness. The pound showed strength uh, here over the last couple of hours, uh, and when I look at the four hour time period. We're still in a downward trend, but our downward trend is losing a little bit of momentum, You're losing a little bit of steam. We actually just put in a higher swing low right here. Uh, and so I'm a little bit more uh, cautious about using a level like this one up here. I was considering this level, um, but I'm going to be a bit more cautious. If I don't get at least a, a three to one reward to risk on the arrival here, it may not make a lot of sense. So any basing between basically current price and that level is going to make that level a little bit more risky. Um, and then in the year, or excuse me, in the uh, Japanese yen, we are still in that sideways price pattern. But I do think that we may have a little bit of a, of a potential move off of here. Uh, but the problem is, is that we're really still trading in this range, and this range is hard to break out of. So if you have any questions, please send us an email, support at tradersarmy.com. I will talk to you all real soon. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today, and we will be back tomorrow. Later.